Sertomans everywhere are known for their service to others, and with that service comes a reputation of compassion and kindness. As a club, we want to make sure that we are extending the same warmth to our own members. This is especially true when we come together each month for our club meetings. In today's training, we will cover the basics of making your meetings more welcoming. After all, when our members feel like we're excited to have them there, they are more likely to want to get involved, give of their time, and to support our programs, which in turn hopefully means that we will get to keep them as a member. Before we get started, let's remind ourselves that when we talk about making our clubs more welcoming, we mean more welcoming to everyone. This means each and every member, all of our guests, any speakers, and our visiting dignitaries. It's important that we don't just pick and choose. A visiting national officer isn't any more important than a brand new member attending their very first club meeting. Each person matters and contributes to the overall vibe of your club and your meetings. Setting that welcoming tone really starts with having the right team in place. Many clubs opt to do that through a formally organized reception committee. This group of volunteers has three primary responsibilities. To greet members as they arrive, to serve as the welcoming committee to visitors and guests, and to ensure that new members are welcome and introduced to other members. You likely noticed a theme throughout these duties. These volunteers are charged with hospitality at every turn. It should be incorporated into everything that the committee does. Likewise, the committee will work very closely with leadership and other committees to make sure that this welcoming spirit is also echoed in everything that the club does. Taking on this massive responsibility can be overwhelming for the committee as a whole, so it's important to organize the team into smaller subcommittees to divide up the duties so that nothing gets missed. One such group is the club ambassadors. Ambassadors demonstrate goodwill to the membership as a way to cultivate a friendly atmosphere among all people attending your meetings. This vital volunteer team is special because it does not have to be limited in size. People get burnout and people have to miss meetings. However, when we have a large arsenal of ambassadors we can count on, each meeting will be adequately covered so that nothing gets dropped. Just keep in mind that you want to make sure that everyone who wants a turn gets one, even if it's just a fill-in when someone else is sick or when attendance is larger than usual. The responsibilities of club ambassadors are handled primarily at regular club meetings. However, they should also have a significant presence at other club events, such as banquets and installation ceremonies. You may even have a special squad tasked with handling these duties at public-facing events like fundraisers and fairs. So now that we have an idea of who will be making the welcome, let's focus on the process itself. You will want to make sure that you have at least two volunteers on hand to greet club members. And just like in real estate, their location will be everything. These welcoming ambassadors need to be stationed right there at the entrance to greet people as they arrive. They should essentially be the first thing that people see. And as they greet attendees, ambassadors should encourage members to wear name tags to make socializing a little easier. While those volunteers are greeting people at the door, other ambassadors will be working the room. They should circulate among the tables to add a second layer of hospitality. We hope that this approach helps promote congenial mixing alongside traditional Sertoma fellowship. There is no better way to encourage attendance than to demonstrate that a member's company at meetings is genuinely enjoyed by fellow members. Now, a note on those latecomers. You want to make sure that you give them that same welcoming experience when possible. As such, a committee member should remain near the entrance to greet and see anyone who arrives after the start of the meeting. Keep in mind, most people are late for a reason. It may have required extra effort for them to come. So let's show them grace and appreciation for being there with us on that day. It will come as no surprise that we want to put some special effort into welcoming our newest members. After all, this is often the most vulnerable segment of our membership engagement plan. Your welcoming volunteers can play a major role in the process if allowed. It makes sense that a new member sponsor will essentially lead them through their transition into the club, but by working with these sponsors, ambassadors can add a much needed layer to a more club encompassing experience. When a new member arrives to a meeting, the committee should make sure to greet them individually and assist the sponsor with introducing them around to other members. It can be intimidating to walk into a situation where everyone already knows each other, so this little extra step is often much appreciated. One last hint, many clubs ask new members to serve for several weeks on the reception committee to acquaint them with fellow members and club procedures. What better way to immerse them than to throw them right in the middle of everything? It's not just our members that we want to feel welcome at our meetings. That same sense of hospitality should be extended to our visitors and guests. So how do we do this? 
Start by checking them in. Offer them the same warm welcome that you show to your members, then give them a guest's badge and invite them to sign the guest register. Next, have a pre-assigned club host. Their sole job should be to introduce them around and to help them find their seat. If the person happens to be the speaker, they may also need a special liaison to help them tend to any special needs they might have on site, like setup or passing out materials. As we introduce our guests around, remember that it's important to make them feel welcome, but not on display. They don't have to be introduced to every single member unless that's something they've requested. Instead, let it be a natural process where they mix with an assisted casualness. If your club does not have time to hold these introductions before the meeting, a recognition of guests should be included in the meeting itself. Finally, make sure that your hospitality doesn't stop at the door. Follow up with visitors and guests to thank them for coming. And of course, it's always a good idea to include an invitation to attend another meeting or consider joining your club in the future. Finally, let's consider special visiting dignitaries. We'll talk about Sir Toman dignitaries in particular here, but many of the same rules apply to elected officials or other people of note. If the visitor is a regional director or national officer, the committee should provide a seat at the head table for him or her. The president or another appropriate member should formally introduce visiting dignitaries during the meeting. The introduction should include their name, residence, membership classification, and office. This information will likely be gathered in advance, but if not, it should be obtained as soon as the visitor arrives for the meeting. The club liaison will also want to make sure that to acquaint the visiting dignitary with any club customs that will involve him or her. This concludes today's training. We hope that you have found a few tips to help make your members, visitors, and guests feel more welcome at your next club meeting. As always, you can find additional trainings and resources in the Sertoma Member Center at members.sertoma.org. We also invite you to join the conversation with other members in our exclusive Facebook group at the link on your screen.